I share a lot of my work on social media, but of course you know that because you're watching this video on social media. Because I use social media a lot, I pay attention to what other people post about spirituality and religion on social media. I want to get some insights as to, to what other people are saying. And I've been surprised that there's something that I've heard from several uh, content creators about spirituality and spiritual growth. And what they're saying concerns me. I mean, it sounds like it could be okay when you first hear it, but if you think about it a little more, it's not a good thing at all. What that message is, and what I think is dangerous, is they say that if you're serious about your spiritual growth, then you should pay attention to everybody else's growth around you, and if they're not supporting your growth and growing at the same pace that you are, you should cut them off. Wow, I can't imagine that. Today I want to talk about that, and as I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. Growth, any kind of growth, spiritual growth, physical growth, maturation, isn't a linear process. It never is for anybody. A typical process of growth is we grow a little bit, we plateau, we grow a little bit, and sometimes with spiritual growth, with psychological growth, with other kinds of growth, we sort of backtrack a little and come back around. When we think of children and adolescents, we know that some grow quickly, they jump sizes, they, others plateau for a while and remain the same size. Some we call late bloomers, some have growth spurts. That's all natural. Spiritual growth is much the same way. It's an individual process. How we grow, it's really about a lot of different things. But we need to understand that there is no one pattern. There is no one profile for spiritual growth. Let me give you an example, an analogy. A few years ago, we planted a row of nine Italian cypress trees in our backyard. Our goal was to have a nice, tall, elegant hedge in the backyard. We thought that would be something really uh, great for us. We went to the, a nursery. We got nine of the same trees, the same height. We planted them the same day. We fertilized them. When it's dry, we water them. They get the same rain otherwise. Each year we fertilize them with compost that we create out of our kitchen garbage and uh, the debris in the yard. We take good care of them, but they're all different sizes today. Some are taller, some are shorter, some are skinnier, some are thicker. Their growth is not uniform, and that's how it is. That's how growth happens. It happens that way for us. It happens that way for trees. That's growth. So we need to realize that growth will be individual for us. Some things will happen in life that will help our growth and hinder our growth, and that'll be unique for each of us. So for instance, sometimes we'll have challenges, difficulties in life, for one person, that may be the cause to grow further. For another person, it may be a back step for them because it's so difficult to get through the challenge. Some people will experience affirmation and good things and, and positive aspects in life, and that will draw them further in growth. Others, they'll experience those same good things, and it'll just keep them on a plateau with nothing else much happening. And that's how it is. One of my great heroes of the Christian mystic tradition, Teresa of Avila, really exemplifies growth and, and explains growth in her reflections. You know, the first 40 years of her life, she was very devout. She did her spiritual practice. She did everything that she thought was right. She followed the advice of, of people around her. And she looked back on those first 40 years and she described them as mediocre. It was mediocrity. Not much was happening. It was just there. But something happened after she was 40 in midlife, and things broke open for her, and she grew to become 
the great mystic and teacher that we know today. And many people for hundreds of years have learned from her writings. And that's another important aspect. She wrote what was happening to her. She wrote it in books and in letters. She shared it with the sisters in her community. She shared it with other people. She stayed connected. She was surely growing faster than other people during that second half of her life, but she stayed connected in community because it's the reflection with others, that support from others, the feedback we get from others that really helps us to integrate our spiritual growth with other aspects of our life. It's part of what makes us whole, well-rounded people. So stay engaged in healthy relationships and continue to nurture your inner spirit because those things really are important for your spiritual growth. Yes, working with a spiritual director is often vital because too often things are confusing and we don't have the support we need, but a spiritual director can be very helpful. But the most important thing is your spiritual growth isn't about goals or success. It's about a process and a journey. It's going to be the journey of your lifetime, so appreciate it as it's unfolding. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, leave me some comments, and know that I appreciate the time you spend with Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a really great day.